All right, everybody. Welcome back again. Uh, last episode, we got a car driving around. Hopefully, it's working well for you. It needs finished, but that's later, right? We just get it going for now. We polish later. Uh, what we're gonna do in this episode is we're gonna make the player get into the car and out of the car, and it's gonna take a while. So let's start first. Uh, turn on your player rig. If you're following along, turn him back on, get the car back on. Now, I did this just for demonstration purposes. I went into the car and I added a car door by simply going into the sprite editor and making it a. Well, let me show you. Let's go to. Uh, any of the sprites will do. Right here, car, sprite editor. Basically what I did is I made this, which is our car. I also moved this axis back a little bit over the wheels like we talked about last video. Then what you do is you just move that out of the way and then I selected the door as another sprite. Made sure it was centered on the top. And then I put this back. Like so. And uh, then saved it out. Just don't forget. Before you do that, you want to change this to multiple sprite mode. All right. And then uh, this is trickery sprite. Just I put it under the door. It's zero. The car door is layer two, so that it can open and look black instead of like another door underneath aka trickery alright now ideally you would go into another program and cut out this whole door and window and uh, make it the door object and then you would have an interior sprite that goes underneath you could also even make this window a separate sprite and make it, you know, roll up and down into this car or a sunroof. All kinds of stuff you can do with layering and picture picture trickeries. But uh, for now, this is what we're going to use. But if you don't have that, um, it's okay. You can still follow along. And I'll probably make my own car because I'm not going to have these cars. I actually want my own interpretations of real world cars. And I'll get into that later because I have no idea what I'm doing there yet. Alright. But let's begin. Let's begin with uh, our player. Just a quick separate side note. I also wanted to mention that y instead of doing this whole cutting the sprite out thing, you can also just animate the car sprite with different frames for maybe halfway open and fully open door and that will work as well okay um, so if you watched my 3d video we're going to do the exact same method to get him in the car and out of the car and to do that we're going to need to find our cars exit point how do we do that well, the best way for me is to find the point at which the door opens how far are you going to have it open? I'm going to say I don't know, like this like that maybe so then just kind of picture him walking up to the to the door like so and he's going to get in This is, looks pretty good actually right here. Alright, or just picture yourself or maybe even go out to the car and see where you come in. You know, where do you, how do you get in the car? But I usually pretend like your hand's gonna open the door. So you wanna kinda just line up with the door uh, edge, I guess, the edge of the door. Usually we stand, uh, let's say he stands about here. Alright, and we can change this later. But for now, 
we are going to right click on our player rig we are going to create an empty so we just need the space we don't need to need an object, actual object we're going to call it exit point, you can call it enter point enter exit, we'll name it whatever you want as long as you remember what it's for and then we're going to drag that into our car rig Mm. I might put it on the car. To the car, car rig. I'm having trouble remembering right now. No, it has to be car rig because if your car is animated, I think either one will work. All right. So now we have our exit point, and we need to make our animation. And this is simply done like we did last time. I'm going to play a rig. Animation. We're going to create a new one. Create a new clip. We're going to call this one Enter. Enter car. Alright. And in enter car we're going to say Well, we know he's gonna start here. And I want him to take about two seconds. I think that's I think that's a good amount of time. So, and again, remember that Alright, so I kind of messed up because this whole thing relies on the sprites moving separately from the player rig. Okay, you want it to look like he's getting in and out of the car and not actually getting in and out of the car. Alright. So we're going to attempt to fix that dirty here. Um, the animator still goes off of the, this. This is the path it runs off of. So we need to keep that. So let's do this. Let's right click. Create empty. Um, let's change the name of player rig to player whoops sorry microphone got in the way there player or player sprites player sprites will help you understand sprites alright it's controls sprites and our new one is going to be player rig and then you're going to drag this to the outside of this and then player sprites into player rig. Alright, you want to tear it in like this. Now all your animations are still going to work and you have that separation. Now the problem is player sprites does not need to control the player. So we're going to take player control script and remove it. We're going to take rigid body 2D and remove it. And we're going to add those to our new player rig, if that makes sense. So we're going to take rigid body 2D. And that was a little weird way to do it, but it's the quickest way to do it that I think will work. And we're going to find the gravity scale, turn it to zero, and just leave that be for now. And we're going to go to our scripts folder and take our player control and put it on player rig. So everything should work as normal. Um, let me test that real quick. Oops. Um, first of all, I want to get rid of the car rig. We want the player rig to be on. 
and he needs to his Z needs to be at zero or the camera will never find him. And there he is, he's way down there. Does not look like he's animating though. Um Oh, it's where we find that animator. So let's go into player control. And I'll see you when this loads. All right, and here in our player control script, where we're looking for anim, get component animator, we're gonna change that to get component in child, children because it's no longer in the top object, the root object, you know, it's in a subfolder now. So now I should find that animator and work. Let's test that out. I forgot to zoom in the camera, but I think we'll be able to see. Okay, it's mad. I had errors and I wasn't paying attention to them. Uh, you just have to go into your player rig here and make sure this gun, weapon spawn gun, make sure that's in where it says pistol in your script. Script wasn't completing, so it wasn't playing. You know what I mean? Now should work. I mean small again. We can we can do this. Let's drag this size in. Ooh. And we got our walking back. Alright, let's carry on. Sorry about that. Could probably be a little more structured, but I don't know. I've always been kind of a fly by the seat of your pants, if you will. So, where were we? We're going to take the player and put him into the car. Well, let's zoom back in here, scene view. All right. Animation on the player rig. No, the player sprites. Remember, we're animating the sprites, not the rig. And we're gonna want a intercar animation. All right, now watch the magic here. All right, so in the intercar animation, we're going to say that at 10, his torso is going to have the interact So let's get our let's get our basic movement down. All right. So we know what's going to happen. He's gonna go from here and reach the door, open it, and then hop in the car. So I'm gonna say that at 10, let's switch to torso. Make sure you're recording. Idle, interact. He's gonna switch to that and. Don't want to rotate, we want to rotate player sprites. Alright, he's going to reach for the car like so. And then he's going to turn back this way. While at the same time moving kind of down like so. You kind of see how this works. We don't want him moving that fast. So we want to take this position and hold it till, I don't know, about here. So he'll do this, this. 
we don't want him to move down yet, not till he like this. There we go. Like a Okay, and at that same time this car door is gonna open. We really should probably have that open to begin with. So you're gonna come down. And you're gonna keep going around. You're gonna keep spinning like this. Let's see how that looks. Yep. Should make a little more. It's also going to drop. It's going to go back to idle at this point. And he'll start to move up into the car. This is a lot of guesswork, too. So you can just. Like I want it to be roughly a two second animation. So then he's gonna slide. Ah, did the wrong thing again. Whenever you move the body, you want to move the entire body. So then he's going to move kind of up and in. Let's see what we got. And then when he gets to here, he's going to turn and reach his final spot here. So eventually, you will rotate back to here, which is a 90, I believe. 90. And he will be in the car. About here. So you can see that he. Is there a way to zoom out on this thing? So he'll get in, he'll reach in. Get in, reach in, get in. Alright, now this is very simple, but. And I think I might have that door position wrong. Let's test that out while we was here. And we'll go car door. I'm gonna open that just a little bit so we can see where the edge of it is. Go back to our player sprites and play that animation. Enter car. No, he pulls it right, but. Basically, we don't need him to go down. You know, he kind of opens the door and steps way back. So at this point here, the position. Could really be just back, take a step back. So like, and here too, I'm just stepping back. Apparently, he's not going to listen to me, so we're going to delete these. step back just a little bit just a little bit like this open that door I need to clear that door so 
There's going to need to be a little bit more away from the door. Like this. This is going to take the longest part, guys. It's just measuring, basically. Hope if we were recording. I feel like it needs to be way. Right here, he can go right around the door. That's what we do in real life. Alright, so... Let's say that's our animation. Now that, that entry is pretty slow. So let's bring that in. He doesn't, it doesn't have to be too... He kind of snaps in there. There we go. And he's off. So what you would do here is make sure that he's under the car. So this is sprite layers. Let's change all these to one. Basically all these sprites. One of these is not a sprite. That's not a sprite. There we go. Order in layer one. Okay. Not just now he should get in the car. Oh, because the car is not two, right? Car two. Let's try that. And I know this is gonna get in the way, but Bear with me here. You can see that he gets in. If he had a convertible, this would be fine, but Realistically, this would be cut out. You'd have an interior sprite that would be under, and this sprite would be over, so it would look like he's going between the two. Know what I mean? And then his head also needs to be on one. Or I guess not. Two. You gotta structure it however it works. And then I guess the car would have to be three. Do you guys get what I'm going for here? At the same time this is happening, our car is going to need an animation of its own. So perhaps we should make a car sprites car rig situation too. No, we have this. This is the car. Alright, let's animate this. So let's create an animation. I'll call it Open Door. Okay, simple enough. And now if you had a frame by frame you would do that here just like we do our player but since we do not we are going to take the car door and we're going to say that it has a rotation of zero make sure it's recording it used to be automatic I don't know what happened I swear it used to be automatic alright and then it's just going to be like a third one second clip maybe of the door rotating open like so just open the door a 
first to make sure it doesn't loop. Open door, does not loop. And let's drag that into our animation folder. Drag that into our animation folder. Now we've got the two things we need. And here's how this works on the code side. First, we need to go to the animator of the car. You'll see the open doors here. We don't want that, so let's create. Right click, create state empty. And make that the default state. Alright. And then we want to go to this. Make transition to and we're gonna copy this. Control C was it? D? Control D. And it's gonna go to close door from there. And then from there it just goes back here. With parameters, parameter, trigger, open, and trigger, close. Alright, so from the default state, we want it to open, no exit time, so whenever we set tell it to open, open. And whenever we want it to close, when we tell it to close, but not until it's open. Just leave that exit time and then simply put close. And then this, once it's closed, we'll just go here. But we want to run open door at negative one. So we're reversing it. Alright, and that's the trickery and tomfoolery you can do to do two animations in one. Alright, his code time, guys. See you in Visual Studio. So we're going to need a couple things here. We're going to need... Um, another game object, public game object, active vehicle, so that we know which car we're looking at. And then I think where we had our ray casting, but that was only when we did I'm not sure. Um, basically, we're going to press E to get in our car. Let's make a new little area for interactions. This. So if input dot get key down and we're going to do key code dot e alright it's going to be to get in your car we're going to need to check a few things we need to know are we close enough we need to know and if so, set player to exit point position. Um, so I guess the first question is, do we have a vehicle? Do we have a vehicle. Somebody told me it's very helpful to write it like this because it pretty much tells you how to make the code. We set the player to the position and then we animate him. Animate 
eight player. Then we need to set players parent to car. That way he takes off when the car takes off. And All right, so now we know what to do. So, do we have a vehicle? How do we check that? Well, we're going to cast a ray. If you're pressing E, it's going to fire off a ray. We can just copy this same code right here. Control C. Mm, where are we at? Alright. And if that collider is car, then active vehicle. is that game object. See how that works? And then anytime you're near a car and you press E, or you're looking at a car and press E, it's gonna make that your active vehicle. We're not gonna deal with damage. And now we can use the same code when we press E near a door. You now you could say, for instance, case door. So if it's tagged as a door, then you would activate door etc. You know what I mean? And don't forget your brakes. Like that. You can just keep going. Anytime you press E it'll check what kind of uh, tag does it have. And you can make it do different things accordingly. So now we know. Yes we have a car it's now our active vehicle. Are we close enough to it? Well, we need to check the distance and we did that here player to mouse distance so we can again copy this control paste that here and we're going to say player to vehicle and it's going to be from our transform dot position to uh, this is where we need the vehicle script because we need that exit point right here so to exit point position. How do we find that? We need the car script. So we can say car controller vehicle script equals um, active vehicle because we know what that is now. Active vehicle dot get component alright that's gonna have whoops like so and what type of component it's a car controller script like that so we're gonna grab the script now we can say vehicle script dot exit point did we not make a reference to it yet that's a bad bad rule bad boy nope we did not so find which one's our actual script here this one. Alright, this one's old. Um, 
we need to make that a thing that we can access. So, public transform. Let me call it exit point. You can really do game object too, but since it's not really an object, it's just the transform. And that way you don't have to type game object dot, or you know exit point dot transform dot position. You can just put exit point dot position. Makes it a little easier. And then we're gonna put that in ourselves in the inspector. So save that. Come back to our player. Now we should be able to find that. Script dot exit point. There it is. And it's already a transform, so you don't need that. Just put exit point dot position. See what I mean? So now we got our distance. And if it's close enough, let me see if player to vehicle distance is less than um, let's try 1f for now so we want to be really close it's less than 1 then we're going to say transform dot position vehicle script dot transform position if you're really close, it's just going to pop you there and then animate the player. Oops. So, we would enter the car. It's going to be a function. Alright. And that will be animating the player and setting the parent to the car. Those both happen in there, so we can get rid of those. And then we're gonna come way down to the bottom. So that's where I like to put my enumerators. So we're gonna call this one I enumerator. Enter car. do these because we need some wait functions and anytime you need to wait a couple seconds this coroutine is what what's what it's good for so enter car we're going to do nm dot set we never made it for that did we ah all right, let's hop back. Oops, not that one. Let's go to player here. And from any state, that way even if we're running, we want to be able to enter car. It should be here somewhere, though. There it is, enter car. All right. It's going to be a base level. By level, I mean layer. Base layer. And we're going to say from any state, make transition to enter car. And of course, we're going to control D because there's going to be an exit car. Come on. Which again will be the negative one of enter car. And while we're at it, click this enter car, it'll take us here, and we can say it does not loop. Alright, let's so move here. And I think once we get out of enter car, we can just go to idle, because we're always going to want to just idle. 
think that makes sense. So now we need our parameters. It's going to be another trigger. Simply called enter car enter yeah car enter car name it same as the sprite because that's not confusing and trigger exit car I don't know why I'm doing caps I've been doing lowercase probably should stick to that. There's conventions everybody goes by, I do whatever. Let me make sure I can read that. Exit car, enter car. Alright. So, no exit time. Whenever we get near it, no matter if we're running, we're going to be able to just enter our car. Boom. It's going to come here. Enter our car. Once that's done, so has exit time and we are leaving our car it's going to go here boom and once that's done has exit time it's just going to go to idle just doesn't need a parameter but we do need to change the name of this to exit car you can call it whatever you want, GTFO, um, whatever. One of the fun parts of coding, naming the stuff. All right. So now that we have that, we can go back here to anim set trigger, and that needs a capital S, I believe. We're gonna set the trigger inner car then you're gonna yield return new wait for seconds one point five seconds and then we need to set our parent for 1.5 seconds, we need transform dot set parent. Ah. Transform dot set parent. And how do we do that? Is it it? Okay, yeah, it's in in parentheses here. We're going to set that to, we want vehicle script, vehicle script, oh it's not public, it's not a vehicle script, dot, exit point, dot position. So even though our character looks like he's inside the car, he's not. He's actually on the exit point. So you want to set that to be his parent. And so we can just drive around with the car. But to do that, we're going to need to make that a public. And I don't know if you're allowed to do that like we did in here. We made it up in here. I don't think you can. Once you make a function in a function, so we're going to do this. Vehicle script. Control C. We're going to just make it up here. Car controller vehicle script equals. Uh, well, no, not equals. We're going to set that. Set that with our code. And come down here and just say vehicle script equals that. Now anything in this code can use that, which should make our enumerator happy.
Oh, it doesn't want its position. It just wants to know what am I parenting to. So there. There we go. Alright. I honestly do not know how this is going to work. But it makes sense. And from here, you could make another function that says, hey, start the car. And that's a whole other deal. But we might as well make one for exit the car. Um, I numerator exit car. And all you're going to do here is anim. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Anim dot. Hit trigger. Exit car. And you're going to wait that 1.5 seconds. You'll return new. Wait for seconds. I just realized that when people play your game, they're going to do stuff you don't want them to do. So we should have been preparing for that. So how about after that, we're going to transform set parent to null. I think that's how that works. Then you won't have a parent anymore. So, and we're going to give uh, can 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 control equals true. This is a new bool we're going to use because you know players will never just wait. So once you get in the car, we're going to say can control equals false. It's just going to be a simple bool, and then we're going to put. all of this all this stuff I guess we don't need any of this if we can't so right here if can control If you can control, so I'm gonna take all of this. If you can't control, you can't do any of this. Probably should have done this first. And yes, my computer is this slow. The magic of editing, you guys skip out on a lot of this. Maybe I can help with the wheel. There we go. Um, don't need deal damage. I think it ends right here. All of this update stuff. Control X. Man, I hope that saves. Control V. And there we go. No, he will do none of it if you can't control. That warrants a test, I think. Let's go up here and make a bool. Do a public one so we can test it. Public bool can control. And when you start the game, yes, you can control. All right. Let's test that. Let's hop on out. See if any of this has worked. Let's go to our scene. Alright, let's go to our camera. Oh, yeah, we're gonna wanna switch to the switch the camera and stuff too. Cause the car, we don't want the car to control. Hold on, we gotta go back and fix that.
on the car controller here. We also want it to have a can control right here. If can let's call it can drive. If can drive. All right. Put all that in here. There we go. I'm going to do a public bool and drive. It's going to start with false. All right. And back in the player controller when you get in the car. After you set the parent, you're in the car, so then you can uh, active vehicle, no, vehicle script dot can drive. Why did I not fill it? Vehicle script dot can drive equals true. And when you get out of the car, you need to set that false right away. Just like that. Checks and balances, right? And then the camera. When you're in the car, we want it to be on you. When you're out of the car, just said that backwards. When you're in the car, follows the car. When you're out of the car, follows you. So we need to hunt that down. Let's go to our camera and find its script, cam control script. Uh, first of all, why is this doing here? Then we're going to go to scripts, cam control. So right here, this target. Mmm, how do we do this? Well, we're going to have access to player, screw, it's player control, and we're going to call it player script. Yeah. So at the start of the game, it's already going to know that player script equals game object dot find. Except we didn't call it player. Player rig. Define player rig. And then dot get component. Alright, and we're going to look for his script. Which is, of course, layer control. Like so. Do this whenever you start up, find a player rig and get its player control, make the other player script. And we can say that any update if Player script dot. Eh, we're gonna have to make one, huh? If it's in player script that is driving, how about that? If you're driving, then target equals player script dot active vehicle. Dot transform dot position. Okay. 
Oh yeah, it doesn't want the... Uh, just wants the game object. Alright. And then here you probably zoom the camera way out. We'll tackle that later. He's driving, it's the active vehicle. Else. Target equals. Layer. And again, this is something probably should have done here. So let's do mm, public game object player. This player equals name of dot find uh, player rig. And player script can just be layered I'll get component like that. And then this will be happy. Target equals player. And of course we gotta make our car control now. No. We gotta make that bool way up here. It's gotta be public since another script's trying to access it. Bool is driving equals false when you start. So it's only gonna happen. I suppose I could just minus some of those out. Not the scroll so far. When you enter the car, it's gonna get in, the vehicle can drive. And then is driving. It goes through. So here we back up is driving equals false Ooh, false like that back to here to find out what time point this is exactly That's really it, I can't. There we go. Let's do 20. 20, so at point 0.2, we're going to open the door. Alright, we're just going to hard code that in. So let's go on over here. And. Player control when we enter the car. We're going to do this function here for point two. Point two.
Then we're gonna say v equals script. Dot nm dot set trigger. Just do it like this through code. Dang it. Open door. And that's not public. So we're going to make it public. Oh, it's cam control on that car. Right here. This needs to be public. And now we can access it. Go back to player control. There we go. And then we've got to let it finish out that end. So we're still going to need to yield return new weight force. Seconds. We've got to finish that animation out. So it's at 1.3 seconds. And then we do all this stuff. Add the same stuff to exit car. Control C. So this will be flipped. Start. No, wait a minute. Control C. Start animating. Control V. Control C. Control V. It's just going to be backwards. 1.3. Start exiting the car, and then it's going to get to the point where he closes the door. Done. All right, let's see how that works. Well, your rig doesn't have a box. Circle collider. Radius shrink that bad boy down. Bad boy like so. Let's go back here and let's do a new vector three to two. Transform dot position dot x plus point. One F transform dot position dot Y. So I'm trying now, and then the car doesn't even have its exit point. We need that here. Let's try it now. I'm confident now. First of all, can we get car? Yep. Alright. But did that make the active vehicle? Yep. So, and I think he's in there. No, he is gone. Exit point. Bring that back to zero land. So, he gets the active vehicle, gets the vehicle script. He definitely notices the distance and gets close. 
stuff. At least that's that. Oh. Um. It's not a function that we did. It's an I enumerator. To run I enumerators, we need to put start coroutine. Uh, I think you actually have to put in like this, what it's named. Pretty sure. Let's try that. Errors. Same thing again in children. That should be it. But I think we just ran into a problem where the collider was still on and he was like smashing it. We'll find out. So we're gonna go to our car, blah, blah, blah. Get in the car. Yeah, see you can't get in because of the collider. So what we gotta do is deactivate it for a minute. Um. Or at least the his rigid body. Let's do that. Where is it at? Player control. Enter car. Before we do this animation, we're gonna say rb dot enable. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Rb. Did we not name it rb? We never. Okay. Rigid body 2D RB. RB equals get component. Um, this, like this. And it's a rigid body 2D. Boom. Back down here. When we enter the car, we want that to be dot uh, is kinematic equals true. Don't make it do anything. And the very last thing we want to do here before we give control back is rb dot is kinematic equals false. Let's give it a shot. Once you have this set for the first time, I mean it's easy, but figuring it out, not so much. So we're going to our car. Yada yada yada. Look at that, guys. It didn't close. But you know what? Now we can drive the car. Oh, it's a twister. Alright, stop the car. Right here, we're into car. When we press E. Do a check here. Are we driving? If is driving. Um. Start coroutine. Exit. Else, like this, like this, like this, and the rest. 
control X. Put that in here. And now if we're driving, it's not gonna keep doing all this stuff. All right. Hopefully, we can get out of our car now. Still didn't close the door though. Can we fix that? Because after about, well, once he gets in, right about here, we can close the door. thing here open except no I want it to open first backwards of the other one so open and then close like that this should work oh, you guys are probably frustrated by now um, I don't know what this means it won't take me to where what's wrong so for now we will ignore it So when you're doing this, you can make checks like the car has to be stopped, or you can just stop the car from moving and get out, because I'll show you what's about to happen. We're going to get in our car, and we're going to drive, and still be able to duck out. Maybe. And I think I know what happened. Because now we can't control anymore. So none of this works. I get it. So we simply have to put that outside. I think that's fine actually. Yeah, I think that's fine. So we just gotta put this outside of here that says if input dot get key down. E code dot E um, and is driving, then get out of the car. Protein. Exit car. 
And this is how we live and learn, guys. We'll make one long video. We'll save, go back. Get in the car. Get out of the car. Little timing issues, but there you go. Now you can. Well, let's fix that. Um, when we right here, transform the rotation equals vehicle script dot exit point dot rotation should be that simple they're always guaranteed to smooth animation in and out around again. Car. Rip it. Alright. So while he goes to... Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, uh, the car goes to Oz. Uh, just want to say thanks again for watching. This is a long one, but I want to show the trials and errors. Because that's how we learn. But we're getting there. We can tidy everything up. Um, again, this is the end of my time for this weekend. But if you guys got any questions, I'll be happy to walk you through it. And uh, I'll try to put that car in a in the sprites folder for this episode. That way, if anybody has trouble making their own quick and dirty door fix, we can get that squared away. Alright. Alright guys. Thanks for hanging in there. Have a good time and take it easy.